All right, welcome back to the Scoop with Coop. We did it. We're at the top of the mountain, Proverbs 31. We finally made it here. This is on top of the historic Mount Amunum. This was one of the main radar stations for the whole West Coast during the Cold War, and it overlooks the whole Silicon Valley. Right over that way is the bay, which you can just barely make out through the fog. But I thought this would be a great place to come, finish it up, and overlook one of the hubs of the world right here. Who would, who would think it's this calm and peaceful? And right down there is basically one of the, uh, the epicenters of the world for, for business and tech and secularism and greed and cool cars. So yeah, anyway, <laughs> let's get started. Don't forget to like this video, listen for your favorite verse to comment below, and don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. I will be posting some new ones here shortly. All right, let's get started with Proverbs 31. Proverbs 31. The words of King Lemuel, the utterance which his mother taught him. What, my son, and what, my son of my womb, and what, son of my vows? Do not give your strength to women, nor your ways to that which destroys kings. It is not for kings, O Lemuel, it is not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes intoxicating drink, lest they drink and forget the law, and pervert the justice of all the afflicted. Give strong drink to him who is perishing, and wine to those who are bitter of heart. Let him drink and forget his poverty, and remember his misery no more. Open your mouth for the speechless, in the cause of all who are appointed to die. Open your mouth. Judge righteously and plead the cause of the poor and needy. Who can find a virtuous wife? For her worth is far above rubies. The heart of her husband safely trusts her. So he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not evil all the days of his life. She seeks wool and flax and willingly works with her hands. She is like the merchant ships. She brings her food from afar. She also rises while it is yet night and provides food for her household and a portion for her maidservants. She considers a field and buys it. From her profits, she plants a vineyard. She girds herself with strength and strengthens her arms. She perceives that her merchandise is good and her lamp does not go out by night. She stretches out her hands to the distaff and her hands hold the spindle. She extends her hand to the poor, yet she reaches out her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of snow for her household, for all her household is clothed with scarlet. She makes tapestry for herself. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them and supplies sashes for the merchants. Strength and honor are her clothing. She shall rejoice in time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom and on her tongue is the law of kindness. She watches over the ways of her household and she does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also and he praises her. Many daughters have done well, but you excel them all. Charm is deceitful, and beauty is passing, but a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her the fruit of her hands, and let her works praise her in the gates. Proverbs 31. All right, Proverbs 31, another great one. I know you're all waiting for this one. Basically, as I've been saying all through Proverbs, you leave the Proverbs 7, and you cleave to the Proverbs 31, all right? If you take nothing else away, that's the key here. So I really like this beginning part. You know, you hear a lot, it's the, the father speaking to his son, but what's really interesting about Proverbs 31, it's the words of the mother to the son. And she says, don't give, yourself, don't give your strength away to women, and don't give your ways to that which destroy kings. And then she gives some specific examples. She, uh, she tells him not to drink wine. She said, it's not for princes to drink wine, uh, because princes are supposed to rule. Kings need to know the law. And if they pervert justice, then they're not a righteous and godly king. She says, give strong drink to him who's perishing and wine to those who are bitter of heart. So if we want to be, you know, striving for the best that we can be, we need to make sure that we are not taken by alcohol either. That's a, also a common theme throughout Proverbs. It, jumping down to verse eight, this is great here. Open your mouth for the speechless. Open your mouth, judge righteously, and plead the cause of the poor and needy. You know, in, in Bible times, but even, even today, so many are poor and needy and afflicted. And it's, it's, a, it's a mother speaking to her son who is a prince who, who will be 
in that position of authority and she's telling him, make sure you don't forget the poor and the needy. They are the ones that need your defense. All right, here we go. Verse 10. This is, this is what you've all been waiting for. Who can find a virtuous wife for her worth is far above rubies? I think this pretty much is, is self-explanatory here. But uh, a, f- a few things. I really appreciate her, uh, the industriousness, uh, if that's a word. Yeah, the industriousness of the Proverbs 31 woman. She's not just sitting around at home all day. She's not just, she's working with her hands. In verse 13, she willingly works with her hands. She's like the merchant ships bringing her food from afar. She's managing her household. She's managing her family. She has servants. She considers a field and buys it. Um, you know, from her profit, she plants a vineyard. She girds herself. She strengthens her arms. You know, this isn't just the, the, the passive sit at home. So many people want to say that uh, Christianity in the Bible, you know, puts, puts women down. But this is exactly the opposite. If you read it, it's really giving the woman a, a very prominent role within the household, within the family. Uh, she is running things. She's running a business here. It says she's, uh, you know, she makes linen garments and sells them. She sit, her husband is known at the gates. Uh, she makes tapestry for herself, strength and honor her clothing. She opens her mouth and out comes wisdom. On her tongue is the law of kindness. She watches over the ways of her household and she's not idle. I appreciate that so much. And then, of course, the end here uh, is, is always the famous one. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband praises her. Many daughters have done well, but you ex- exceed them all. But what I really appreciate about this is the, <clears throat> the industry that she has, how she's working, how she's creating things, how she's running that household, um, how she's checking the merchandise, she's creating product, she's growing things, she's buying and selling, all those things that uh, so many so many people put the Bible down for as saying, oh, women are oppressed in the Bible. Women are oppressed in, in the Bible days. In Christianity, they just sit home and, and do absolutely nothing. But Proverbs 31 is exactly the opposite of, of that. And that's what I appreciate so much. She's running her family and she is, uh, she's industrious. She's diligent. She doesn't eat the bread of idleness. Verse 30 and 31, a great way to end Proverbs. Uh, so all throughout Proverbs, we've seen the fear of the Lord, fear the Lord, fear the Lord. And right here in verse 30, it, it sums it up for, for finding a wife. Charm is deceitful and beauty is passing, but a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. So I really appreciate these two verses. You have to find a woman who fears the Lord, just like uh, as we all need to fear the Lord. So also... Um, we need to find a woman who fears the Lord because she will be praised. And uh, right here in verse 31, it's interesting. It says, let her own works praise her in the gates. Of course, the gates were the place of where people would, would meet and gather and do their business and do their, uh, do pretty much <clears throat> everything in, in Bible times, in these ancient times would take place at the gates. And so when it says, let her own works praise her in the gates, that means that she had to be diligent. She had to have an industry. It wasn't that she was just uh, trailing in, in her husband's image. It says, let her own works praise her in the gates. So find yourself a woman who fears the Lord. And there's probably a squirrel down there. So it's been, a, it's been an awesome experience doing this Proverbs challenge. Hope you guys have enjoyed it as well. I have loved diving into the Proverbs. Actually, uh, yesterday I got a call from from someone who watched one of my videos. You know who you are. Watched it three times, loved it, called me and said, hey, thank you for making an impact on my life. So don't forget to comment below uh, your favorite verse. I appreciate uh, hearing from you as well. And we made it. I thought this would be a great place to film the final proverb. So yeah, I never know how to end these things. Leave the Proverbs 7 and marry a, marry a 31, right? <laughs>